Open the podcast bay door as hell. everyone and welcome to episode 143 of Welcome to Geek Town. I'm your host, Kurt Onstead. I've been a proud geek all my life, being into role-playing games, board games, sci-fi, fantasy, and especially superheroes and comics. And I want to help others join me in those pursuits, but I've found that sometimes people can get overwhelmed or feel left out because they don't already have what some consider the requisite knowledge to be considered a fan. And that's where Welcome to Geek Town comes in. Here you can ask your questions without feeling like a gatekeeper is calling you out for not yet being fully versed in every aspect of your new interest. We've reached the end of another month, so it's time to shout out all my patrons, whose support helps keep this show going. Once again, my sincere thanks goes out to Justin Bailey, Lily Breen, Jesse Clark, Ricky Garvin, Rob Garrison, Aaron Woodward, Aaron Borst, Carla Hoffman, Lyndon Onstead, Julio Herrera, and Matthew Saint. Remember, it's just a dollar per month to join in and get this monthly shout-out, as well as audio outtakes and full scripts of every written episode. If you're enjoying the show, why not go to patreon.com slash welcome to geek town and chip in? Recently, I watched a movie called DC League of Super Pets. Yes, I know it came out in 2017. I'm not always up to date on everything. And it got me thinking about the original version of the team, the Legion of Super Pets. Since that team was created pre-crisis, if you're unfamiliar with that term, go check out the remastered version of Episode 1 released just a few weeks ago. I decided it was time to look at that team's original lineup and see what happened to each of them in the post-crisis continuities. But first, who were the members? The Legion of Super Pets were first featured in Adventure Comics, specifically issue number 293, which at the time was where Superboy stories were being published. As this is pre-crisis, this is Superman as a young boy, rather than a clone or son of Superman. This story also involved the Legion of Superheroes, the 30th century team that Superboy was a part of thanks to time travel technology. In this tale, Aliens with powerful mental abilities summoned the Legion to the past, and taking over the young hero's minds, forced them to try to kill Superboy. Fortunately, Crypto, Superboy's dog, came to help and chased off the aliens, as their powers for some reason could not affect animals. Freed from their mental control, the Legion of Superheroes traveled through time and recruited other animals with superpowers to defeat the aliens for good thus rescuing Superboy, who had been weakened due to kryptonite exposure during their fight. The original team of Super Pets consisted of Crypto, Streaky the Super Cat, Beppo the Super Monkey, and Super Horse, later named Comet. Crypto, as I mentioned, was Superboy's dog. He and Beppo were both Kryptonian animals who were part of the test program Superman's father, Jor-El, worked on before sending Kal-El off into space. Crypto went off in a separate rocket that veered off course and arrived on Earth after Superboy had been adopted by the Kents, while Beppo actually stowed away on baby Kal-El's rocket, but wandered off before the Kents found him. While Crypto was adopted as a family pet, Beppo spent much of his time either in the jungle or in outer space alone only appearing in the comics 16 times before Crisis wiped him out from existence. Crypto featured in many more stories throughout the Silver and Bronze Age, even getting his own feature in 11 issues of Superman Family in the late 70s. Although non-canonical, the last time the original Crypto was seen was in Alan Moore's Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow, where the faithful dog gave up his life to defeat the Kryptonite Man. 
The other two animals in the original iteration of the Legion of Super Pets were both companions of Supergirl. Streaky, named for the lightning-shaped marks in the fur on his back, was exposed to X-Kryptonite by accident when Supergirl tossed it out a window into a nearby forest. She created the unique substance, trying to remove regular green kryptonite's deadly properties. Streaky gained powers similar to a Kryptonian, despite being a regular house cat from Earth. Although his powers wore off after a while, and so in each subsequent adventure, Streaky would somehow once again be exposed to the ex-Kryptonite. Because of this contrivance, when all of the Kryptonite on Earth was turned into regular iron, an event that happened in 1971's Superman number 233, Streaky's super adventures came to an end. Then there's Comet the Super Horse. Comet's first published appearance was actually in the same story where the Legion of Super Pets first came together. An editor's note let the readers know that the Super Horse was to be a pet of Supergirl's sometime in the future. And sure enough, seven months later, in Action Comics number 292, Supergirl meets Comet. Unlike the rest of the Super Pets, Comet's origins have nothing to do with either Krypton or Kryptonite. Instead, Comet has a more mystical origin, as he was originally a centaur in ancient Greece, named Byron at the time. When he saved Circe from being poisoned, she offered him a reward. He asked to be made fully human so that he could be with Circe, but she accidentally gave him a potion that made him fully horse instead. To make up for her error, she then brewed up another potion to give the former centaur superpowers, as well as grant him immortality. The sorcerer Maldor, who had originally tried to poison Circe, and was also able to cause the mix-up that made Byron a horse instead of a human, was able to imprison Byron in a planet around one of the stars in the constellation Sagittarius which is where he stayed for centuries, until the rocket containing Supergirl happened to pass by and weaken the barrier keeping him there. Byron returned to Earth and kept his tabs on Supergirl while pretending to be a normal horse, eventually using his telepathic powers to bring them together so they could use their powers as a team to help people. In later adventures, Comet, named for the comet-shaped mark on his hindquarters by some ranch hands he allowed to capture him, was enchanted once again, and was able to turn into a human being, but only when a comet was flying by the planet he was on. He kept his human identity a secret from even Supergirl, and romanced her as Bronco Bill Starr, a rodeo stunt rider. Now, all of these characters were wiped out of continuity by Crisis on Infinite Earths, as DC decided that there should only be one survivor of Krypton, and that's Superman. So that meant no Crypto or Beppo, and with no Supergirl, no Streaky or Comet either. But all of these characters eventually returned in one form or another in the comics. Other than brief appearances in Infinite Crisis and Final Crisis, which we're actually calling back to the pre-crisis version, Beppo the Super Monkey has never made another appearance in mainstream continuity, other than one showing that I'll get to in a little bit. There actually have been three cats named Streaky in the post-crisis world. I'll save the third for later, at the same time I cover the new Beppo, but first, in Peter David's Supergirl series, art by Gary Frank and Leonard Kirk, a cat named Streaky jumped from a very high tree limb and was saved by Supergirl, who said, I don't think the world is ready for a flying kitten. This Streaky appeared in a few issues, mostly as a background gag, but was not Supergirl's pet, nor had any powers. In 2006, a new Supergirl series started from writer Joe Kelly and artist Ian Churchill, and it was revealed in issue 10 that Kara had adopted a cat that she named Streaky. Unlike previous versions, Streaky was not named for the lightning bolt-shaped mark on their fur, but instead for the unfortunate habit of missing the litter box. When Supergirl left Earth for New Krypton, she left Streaky in the care of her former roommate, Lana Lang. The most famous of the Super Pets is undoubtedly Crypto, 
And so it's unsurprising that he has had the most post-crisis appearances. The first crypto to show up in post-crisis continuity was a small mutt adopted by Bibbo Bukowski, a recurring supporting cast member of Superman's in the 80s and 90s. He wanted to name the dog Krypton after Superman's home planet, but the dog tag maker tried to cheat him out of some of his recent lottery winnings, and so the final letter ended up being left off. Crypto ended up being adopted by Superboy and his supporting cast following the death and return of Superman storyline. This Superboy is Connor Kent, the clone made by combining Superman and Lex Luthor's DNA. You can hear more about him in episode 15 if you're curious. Like the post-crisis streaky, this version of Crypto never had any superpowers and was eventually dropped from the series taken in by a friend of Superboy's when the Lad of Steel went missing. A few years later, Superman found his way to a planet that seemed to be the pre-crisis version of Krypton, but was actually a trap created by Brainiac. One of the inhabitants of that world was a new Krypto, and when Superman freed himself, he was able to rescue the dog and take him back to Earth with him. Since that 2006 story, Crypto has been a fairly regular companion to the Man of Steel and his family. Now, unlike the pre-crisis Crypto, who would be portrayed with thought bubbles showing human levels of intelligence, this new Crypto had the mental capacity of a dog, but with the powers of Superman. And so Crypto had to spend months in the Fortress of Solitude being trained by Superman and one of his robot duplicates specifically created to include Clark's scent, so Crypto would treat the android as his master. After that training period, Crypto had adventures both with the Man of Steel and on his own. After a time, Superman, realizing Crypto needed more open space, sent the dog to live on the Kent farm, one of the rare cases where the farm the dog is sent to actually exists. At the time, Connor was living with Ma and Pa Kent, and Superboy and Crypto formed a very close relationship. Crypto was incredibly protective of Superboy up until Connor's apparent death in Infinite Crisis. Unsurprisingly, he got better later. In later stories, Crypto had his origin retconned to be closer to the pre-crisis version of the pup. We're told in Action Comics number 850 that Crypto was from the same Krypton that Kal-El came from, and that Clark and Crypto were together on Earth when Clark was young. And we see Crypto's arrival in Action Comics Annual number 11. This change was inspired by the Mark Wade Lena Francis Yu miniseries Superman Birthright, which was an updated version of Superman's origin that called back to much of his pre-crisis status quo, including Crypto and his adventures with the Legion of Superheroes as a boy. With the new 52 reboot, Crypto was once again lost temporarily, but even that version of Superman eventually found his Dog of Steel. In this version, Crypto was the family pet of the Elves, much as in the pre-crisis version. However, instead of being sent on a separate rocket, this Crypto was sucked into the Phantom Zone while protecting the family when one of Jor-El's experiments went wrong. As an adult on Earth, Clark was able to bring Crypto back out of the Phantom Zone to once again have his faithful companion by his side. With DC Rebirth, the new 52 version of Superman and Crypto were merged back with the original post-crisis versions, with mostly the post-crisis history intact. Crypto is once again the family pet for the Kents, which includes Clark, Lois, and their son, John. Finally, we return to Comet. As with Streaky, Comet's reappearance came in the Supergirl series written by Peter David, with Leonard Kirk on art. However, this Comet bore very little resemblance to the original, especially at first. This new version appeared as a man with a long white mane of hair, three fingers on each hand, and a Comet-like mark on their forehead. Comet's secret identity was played as a mystery in the book for a while, but was eventually revealed to be Linda slash Supergirl's friend, Andrea Martinez, who normally went by Andy, a stand-up comedian. Like Supergirl herself at the time, 
Andy could change back and forth between a regular human being and a superhero. However, unlike Supergirl, the change from Andy to Comet also involved changing genders. In the book, certain characters, like Supergirl and Comet, were merged beings known as Earthborn Angels. Comet's male form had originally been a man named Andrew Jones, who had been rebuilt into a superhuman by an organization called The Stable. Andrew tried to save Andrea's life in one of his early adventures, but the pair were crushed by an avalanche. This is when they merged to become the Earthborn Angel of Love. Similarly, Linda Danvers had merged with Supergirl, who at the time was actually a protoplasmic being called Matrix, and was now the Earthborn Angel of Fire. I know it sounds complicated, but it all makes sense when you read the book. Supergirl was attracted to Comet in their male form, but when Andrea told her the whole story and confessed her feelings for Supergirl, Linda unfortunately could not accept Comet's female aspect as a potential love interest. Fortunately for them, Comet was able to find love with the Earthborn Angel of Light, known as Blythe, who accepted both sides of Andrea slash Andrew. This allowed Comet to fully accept their angelic powers, and Comet now became a winged centaur when in their heroic form, which obviously draws back to the pre-crisis history of Comet. Since the cancellation of that volume of Supergirl, Comet has not been seen anywhere in DC continuity. At least not mainstream continuity. You can find all of the Super Pets in one form or another in DC books aimed at younger readers. Comet shows up in a book titled Supergirl, Cosmic Adventures in the 8th Grade, while Beppo, Crypto, and Streaky can be seen in the Tiny Titans books by Art Balthazar. Now, I did mention a third version of Streaky and another Beppo in DC continuity a little bit ago. In 2017, not only did Streaky return, but we got an entirely new Legion of Super Pets in Super Sons Annual Number 1. Super Sons usually stars Damian Wayne, the son of Batman, and John Kent, Superman's son, in their adventures. But in this annual, we mostly followed their pets and other superpowered animals. In addition to Crypto and Streaky, both of whom have their full set of powers, we also have Titus, a mastiff owned by the Bat family, Bat Cow, a cow with a bat-shaped marking across its eyes, first seen in Batman Incorporated, as well as new characters Flexi, a parrot with stretching powers and feather markings similar to Plastic Man's costume, and Clay Critter, a creature similar to a smaller version of Clayface. In this annual, we learn that these five previously had fought many adventures, but broke up after the unfortunate death of Clay Critter at the hands of Dexstar, a feline red lantern, Bud, and Lou, Harley Quinn's hyenas. Crypto did bring the surviving members back together to rescue animals that were being kidnapped by aliens, and since then the team has shown up again in occasional short stories, where other members have been shown, including an appearance by Beppo the Super Monkey. These fun little tales call back to the Silver Age, although the animals portrayed no longer have the human thought-like bubbles, as I mentioned earlier, nor any telepathic powers allowing them to communicate, so the stories are told with only images, and whatever noises the animals can normally make. Moos, barks, squawks, meows, and the like. So far, there's been less than half a dozen stories involving this modern take on the Legion of Super Pets, but keep your eyes peeled. I have no doubt this menagerie of heroes will show themselves once again. Now, before we end the show, I'd like to make a request. I mentioned Peter David's Supergirl run a couple of times in this episode. Peter is one of my favorite writers and a fun and funny guy from my various interactions with him. Unfortunately, he recently suffered a series of mini strokes in addition to a cardiac event. Even with insurance, this is going to be an expensive recovery, 
and so a GoFundMe has been set up by his wife, Kathleen. If you can afford a few dollars to throw his way, please go and do so. I'll have a link in the show notes at the website. Finally, don't forget that I want to hear from you with either questions you'd like answered in a future episode or just comments on the show in general. You can send any and all of those to me via email at welcome to geektown, all spelled out, at gmail.com. Or you can go to the website, welcome to, the number two in this case, geektown.com, and click the submit a question link if you'd prefer to remain anonymous. Other contact options include facebook.com slash welcome to geektown, twitter at geektown podcast, and mastodon at welcome to geektown at mastodon.social. Also, if you'd like to support the show directly, why not become a patron at patreon.com slash welcome to geektown for just a dollar per month to get access to full scripts of the shows, audio outtakes, and a monthly shout out. You can also help the show grow by subscribing and giving a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts to join the Geek Town City Council, which helps other people find the show so we can all tell them, Welcome to Geek Town, Population, Us. Welcome to Geek Town is written, narrated, edited, and produced by me, Kurt Onstead. Theme music is by Aaron Levitz, logo art by Archie Santana. All of their sound clips are the copyrighted material of their respective owners, and no infringement is intended falling under fair use.